Namaste everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining Dharma Yoga this morning. As always, please practice according to your conditions. If you know the variations and you can do that and you feel comfortable with them, you can by all means do them. Otherwise, please modify and please respect your limitations. So on that note, let me begin. Just give me one second. So let's begin. Sit tall, supremely still, close the eyes and bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere. Fix your mind on God alone. your thoughts in God alone. Um, and in God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May the Lord guide us and protect us through the practice and bestow upon us the fruits of knowledge. May we always have a strong desire for that knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let's do the mantra Om Namah Shivaya, which means I bow to the inner light into calm response.
Do now the mantra for purification. If you know it, you can do it along with me. If not, just imagine you're chanting it through the voice of the Guru and you derive all the benefits of the purification of the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. We need to do it loud in order for it to be heard by the inner bodies and the, uh, and the ones all around us. And we'll do it three times. Try to do each one in a single breath. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pan Prikaksham Sa Bahya Bihantra Ha Sajihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pan Prikaksham Sa Bahya Bihantra Ha Sajihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrikaksham Sa Bhaya Bihantra Ha Sajihi Now we'll do a little bit of alternate nostril breathing. So we're doing it Shivananda style, which means there's no set rhythm. The inhale is roughly equal to the exhale in duration, and the hold is as long as you can, comfortably. So you don't hold until you explode when you exhale. You have to still keep the controlled exhale, otherwise you lose the benefit of the, uh, the whole practice. It's called control of the vital force. That's what pranayama means. So left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb uh, tips connected, other three fingers straight on the left knee. Right hand Vishnu Mudra, second, third fingers fold down towards the palm, Turn the palm towards you, and then it's no longer Vishnu Mudra. It's a mudra we use for Pranayama. So we're going to inhale through the left. Hold the breath, plug both sides of the nose. And through the breath retention, we engage the throat in a root lock. For the root lock, contract all the muscles of the root um, and the buttocks. Pull them up towards the navel. For the, uh, chest, uh, for the throat lock, you raise the chest as you inhale so that when you Hold the breath, you can bring your chin down without hunching your back. You want to keep your back straight. The attention's at the space between the eyebrows. And for, and the tongue comes to the back of the, uh, to just behind the teeth to the roof of the mouth. And for the exhale, you exhale through the right, inhale back through the right, hold again, apply the throat and root lock, both sides of the nose close, exhale through the left, that's one cycle. Okay. Through the exhale, you can release the locks as well, the throat and, and the and the root. So let's try it together. We pretend the first time when we do together that we're holding the breath as long as we can, but we do it together to stay in the collective consciousness. Sit tall now, very tall and straight. Exhale, empty the lungs. The thumb for the right nostril, the right ring for the right, uh, for the left nostril. I should have explained that before. So let's try again. Inhale, exhale, empty the lungs. Close off the right side of the thumb, inhale through the left. Hold the breath, plug the left side as well with the right ring finger, hold the throat and a root block, third eye attention. Keep the attention in the throat and a root at all times, and all the attention at the space between the eyebrows. Control the mind and the mind control of you. Exhale, out through the right, release the locks. Gradually empty. Inhale through the right side. As fully as you can, remember to lift the chest and hold the breath, chin on the chest. Everything stops, all the mind fluctuations, the mind activity, the body movements and the emotions. It's as though they were frozen. Strays away from the third eye, just bring it back. Getting ready to exhale, release the left uh, nostril, breathe out. Inhale again, as fully as you can, and then hold the breath, plug both sides of the nose. All 
the attention at the center of the forebrow. Exhale out through the right side. Release the locks. Inhale again to the right. Hold the breath now, put both sides of the nose, chin on the chest, tongue behind the teeth, the roof of the mouth. Lose yourself into practice. Imagine all beings drawing the benefits from this practice through your experience. Exhale out through the left side. Relax. And continue on your own. Just try to keep the inhales and exhales roughly the same duration. Don't worry too much about it. Try to fill the lungs as much as you can, hold the breath, and even though the body's experiencing that tightness in the throat and our root, the mind remains calm, undisturbed, unaffected. when you need to. Remember, don't hold it so that you explode when you exhale. Control the stream coming out. The inhale and exhale, always the same in quality and duration. Try to keep your attention at the space between your eyebrows to attract all the prana there and keep it there. practice through this technique we gain calmness of mind we augment our concentration this ultimately helps to feed our meditation practice try to practice every day this technique One more after your current cycle completes. Don't shortchange the breath retention. Do it fully. Keep on sitting tall, don't fall, don't slouch. Allow for the maximum, most efficient passage of the breath. Once you exhale through your left side, sit for a moment. Bring the attention to the space between the eyebrows. Clear that space, make it nice and open, and fill it with the 
thoughts of God. Dharmaji says, when you wake up first thing in the morning, think of God. When you do your practice, think of God. Eventually, God comes into all your actions and thoughts and words and deeds. And all actions, thoughts and deeds are done out of a place of loving, kindness and compassion. So now let's bring that into our practice now. Make this an offering to all beings everywhere. Let's come to standing. So let's start off by establishing a firmer connection with that divine essence within. Open up your feet a little bit, about 10 inches. Bring the arms up, the palms facing up. From the fingertips, inhale down through the arms into the heart. Two, three, four, draw in the breast, the breast, six, seven, eight. Hold it all in the spiritual heart. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale out through the arms. Two, three, four. Just the breath leaves, everything else stays in. Seven, eight. Inhale again, pulling everything that you need down in the spiritual heart. Okay, in the center of the chest, in the right side of the physical heart. Seven, eight. Hold it there in the spiritual heart. Hold it as an offering for God. Exhale out through the arms again, just the breath leaves. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time, feel as though you're a strong magnet attracting all the good down into the heart. Everything again that you need. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold it all up the heart. Suspend the breath. Exhale out through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. We'll continue with the exercises to warm up the practice, the body for the practice. Imagine the witness watching the body move all by itself. Start to swing from side to side. Feel as though the arms are heavy ropes. Slap in the body. Lift them around the body. Here, move your shoulders a little bit faster. The arms are like they're dead. Now the heads are flying in all directions. Shake it out. And then start to um, slow down. Bring the hands on the hips, circle the head. Feel so the head were very heavy, just falling from side to side, back and forth around its pivot point. And then switch the direction of rotation. Try to see the floor from all sides as you take the head around. And now take the right arm, start going forward four times. And then go backwards. If you have trouble with your shoulder, you can help support with your left hand. And forward again. And back and then left arm left arm forward four times and back feel as though you're about to throw a ball and imagine you have a weight in your hand to give a little bit more of a swing and back and release sweep the arms up take hold the opposite elbows bend to the left bend to the right Work the waist, go to your left again, and go to the right. Again, left, and then right. Come back to the center, little circles of head and shoulders and the neck. Keep the hips still, and then maybe start to add in the upper chest, uh, the upper back and the chest. Circles a little bit larger. And if you feel comfortable, the whole trunk rotates, hinging at the hips. Swing down, allow the momentum of the downswing, bring it right back up smoothly. And then coming back up, and then circling again, starting to the other side, but just in the other direction, just the head, neck, and shoulders first. And then start to open it up a little bit, 
the chest and the upper back come into the movement like a helicopter propeller and then all the way down it's like um, chase big circles in front of the body good and coming back up release the arms shake up the wrists move them very fingers very very rapidly and then up and down fly the fingers like the wings of hummingbird then release arms up to the side swing right leg back and forth try to bring the knee right to the shoulder hang on to the wall or a chair if you need to You get your knee closer to the shoulder or right on the shoulder. And release. Good. Now from here, just come to the front of the mat. Bring the hands in front of the heart. Close the eyes. Remember to renounce all the fruits of practice. It's a mistake to have any expectations because expectations leads ultimately to suffering. So just try to imagine instead this is your divine duty to all beings everywhere. Do it because it must be done. Surya Namaskara. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, hips forward. Come all the way down. Bend your knees if you need to. Bring your hands on the ground. Left foot back. Sit down to the seat, lower the knee. Come into high plank. Bring the knees down, the seat all the way back behind your heels. Now pull the, to uh, the floor towards you with your arms, propel your chest forward, slide between your arms, bring your chest up and your head back. Roll over your, uh, not roll over your toes, bring the seat all the way back behind your heels. Come again two more times. Lift up and come all the way back one more time. Collide forward. Rush your nose to ground as you come forward and up. Shoulders back, telescope the neck out the shoulders. Roll over your toes, Adho Mukha Sivanasana, allow the heart to mount towards the ground, the head comes down below the arms. Lift the hands, right foot forward, try to please it softly. If it doesn't go very easily, bring the back knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, you can then use the right hand to assist the foot forward. Sink forward through the front hip. Then bring your feet back together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up to standing, arch back. Hands back to the heart. Reach up. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the body in a way that feels comfortable. That allows the breath to remain steady and even. Left foot back. Lower down the knee. The breath will figure out what to do and deliver ease and fluidity and movement. As you bring your seat all the way back behind the heels and then glide forward into your cobra. All the way back. The seat again behind the heels. Come forward, pull with your arms, propel yourself forward with more power and ease. Come all the way back one last time. Feel like a snake creeping through the grass. Imitate the movement of the snake. Roll over your toes, Adho Mukha Sivanasana, lift the seat up and back to send the head towards the ground. Left foot steps forward, sink down through the seat. Feet come together, chest on the thighs, Uttanasana, bow to the legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms again. Stretch, create space, approach a true nature, which is boundless, formless, and limitless in its potential. Then the right foot back, lower down the knee, sink down to the seat. Come into high plank. Down into Ashtanga Namaskar. Knees, chest, forehead down. This time immediately, come forward into the cobra. Pull the shoulders back, lengthen the neck. Make sure you don't jam up the lower back or the back of the neck. Back into downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward to the hands. Sit down through the seat. Feet come together. Pull the body against the legs, head down. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Every movement, reflecting, surrender. Tap into the consciousness of the movements. And when the eyes go down, casting the body falls down, 
the head comes towards the ground. Humility. Left foot back. So you got to see. Looking up, open yourself up to divine grace. Into plank. Again, lower down. Always humble in spirit. Surrender fully to this, uh, this, the highest self. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left foot steps forward for the heads. Feet come together. Uttanasana. Pull the body onto the legs. Head down. Come right up to standing. Hips forward. Reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Sometimes it helps to engage the buttocks and upper back as you bend back. Hips forward. Support the movement. Pull the body down onto your legs. From here, chest on its sides. Join the hands behind the back. Extend to the crown and pull the body down into a forward fold. Push the body against the legs. If you're very flexible, your seat is over the heels, straight legs, the forehead to the shins. Pull hands further forward behind, beyond the head, and then release the hands down. The right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. The inhale, rise up, bring the arms up, exhale, circle the arms down, and bring the seat forward again. The inhale, come up, lift the seat, curl it under, lean away from the leg, so that the lower back doesn't get crunched up. Inhale, heels of the arms, start right at the hip joint. Pull the body from the hips and come down. Inhale, come one more time up. Sink down to the seat, join the hands together. Kapiyasana, pull the arms behind the head. Make a crescent shape, move with your body. And then bring your hands back down. From here, press into your hands. Swing the left leg all the way up and back into Ekapada Anamukha Savanasana. Come forward with your shoulders over the fingertips if you can. Come down to your chest first. Glue the elbows to the sides of the body to come down. If you need to, you can always lower your knee down as your chest comes down. Come right into the cobra here. Shoulders back. Again, telescope the neck out of the shoulders. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Move as though you're doing a divine dance of devotion. Right leg up. Bring the foot forward. Make it beautiful. Lower the seat. Arms up again, sink, uh, lift the seat, exhale, sink the seat down, allow the hands to come down, the head falls back, inhale, come up. Ex again, exhale again, go back one more time. Inhale, rise up, circle down. This time as you come up again, join hands together, Kali Mudra. The Mudra of fearlessness and fierceness, copy uh, and make like a crescent shape move with the body. Now, Bring the hands back down. Bring the left foot in to meet the right. Chest on the thighs. Telescope the chest forward. Plunge the head down again towards the earth. Forehead to the shins, perhaps. Release the hands. Come all the way up to standing. Lift the arms over the head. Arch back. Come back home. Hands to the heart. Panamasana. Raise your arms again. Stretch. Go down. Chest on the thighs, join hands behind the back. Uttanasana. Keep visualizing yourself in the practice you're trying to attain, even if it doesn't seem accessible right now. Keep up the faith, keep practicing, perhaps one day the body will obey. Now release the hands, left foot back. Lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Inhale, come up. This time, turn to the right. Sink the seat as the arms circle down. The inhale again, come up. Exhale. Feel so the arms are the wings of a butterfly. Lift up, graceful, fluid, grand movements. Turn forward again, inhale, come up. Exhale, copy asana again. Pull the arms behind the ears. Crescent moon shape, fingertips over the toes. And then bring the hands down. And then fly the right leg all the way up, Ekapada Anamukha Savanasana. Come forward into your high plank. Can again, elbows glued to the sides of the body, lower down your chest first between your hands. Or just bring your knee down at the same time as the chest is coming down, right through into the cobra, uncoil. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Bring your seat all the way back, mount the heart. Lift the left leg up high, ekapada again. Look between your hands, bring your shoulders forward so your foot lands softly, no big heavy thuds. Move in a way that is pleasing for the witness to watch. No jerks, jerky motions, no hard, aggressive movements. 
bring the hands back down to the ground and bring the right foot in so we can lift. Actually, you know what? I forgot. <laughs> left arm, arms up and turn to your left. Circle down, inhale, come up. Exhale, turn to your left. One more time, inhale, come up. Sink down to the seat, circle to left. This time facing forward, raise your arms up. Lift the seat and push the seat right down towards your front heel. Copy asana again, pull the arms back behind the ears. And now, bring the hands back down. Leave the heart to come back up and then right foot comes in to meet the left. Chest on the thighs, join the hands behind the back. Uttanasana, forehead to the shins, hands come over the head. Again, a gesture of deep humility. <coughs> Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back. Come back home, hands to the heart. Oh, a couple more rounds, reach the arms up. Go down into Uttanasana. Fold the body in half. Lift the hand and chest, press into your hands. Back into Chaturanga, you can hop or walk back. And then into Upward Facing Dog. If it's too much, stay in Cobra. Hips stay on the ground. Otherwise, press the thighs and knees away from the earth. Engage your buttocks, shoulders back, neck, telescope behind the shoulders. Imitate the dog howling at the moon. Copy it in physical the shape physically. Move your toes back into downward facing dog now. Imitate the dog stretching its back. Try to get your head down below the arms to the ground. Maybe your forehead eventually. You soften the shoulders a little bit, maybe the nose. Your shoulders are very open, maybe eventually the chin. Try not to bend the arms. Be like the dog who's loyal to his master, imitate it mentally as well and emotionally. Be playful. And then coming up, lift the heels, bend the knees, and then bring your feet forward softly, hopping or walking, pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up. Go down gracefully. Lift the hand chest, press into your hands. Bend your elbows as you go back so you land softly. No big, heavy, jarring movements. Nothing to agitate the witness who's watching. Upward facing dog. This, now, uh, now we're gonna oscillate between the two poses, upward and then downward facing dog. Round, um, just drop your chest down towards the ground. And then as soon as you enter it, as soon as you complete the pose, and round your back, come forward again, uncoil and flex the spine. Forward five, Mukha Savanasana. Back the other way, Adho Mukha Savanasana. Melt the heart one more time. Round your back, tuck the chin in, and raise the head, shoulders back, chest forward. And right back the other way. Push the heart between the shoulder blades, but then sink it down towards your earth. Lift the heels, bend the knees, look between your hands. Bring your feet forward softly, pull the body down onto your legs, Uttanasana. Come right up to stand, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Take pause here, take a deep breath in. Bring the heart up to the space between your eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart, remain established firmly in divine love towards all beings. the postures now as we do the postures just try to put yourself in the shoes in the body of that being copy it mentally physically and spiritually see God in all the forms we're standing on the left foot first take the right foot by the inside and the thumb behind the heel and see if you can bring your arm and the leg up at the same time depending on flexibility to get your legs straight and your fingers the same height as shoulders they might start off as a T letter T more flexible, pull the foot up a little bit higher towards the shoulder. Lean a little bit to your left. So you keep the same height to the fingers with the toes. Lift up a little bit, be magnificent like a dancer. Good. Now from here, 
options. Bend your knee. You can either take your knee like this, take your left hand to your leg and you can circle around, lean forward a little bit and join, so you can bring your hands either to your back or join them together even, lock your fingers together. Be more flexible, bring your shoulder in front of the leg, find your hands behind the back, bird of paradise. Try to get your right leg up higher. Lean a little bit to your left. And then bring the foot down, come down, try it on the other side. Move through the forms like you're a shapeshifter. Imagine just moving from one pose to the other with effortlessness. Taking your left heel and then bring your leg out and your left right arm out. Again, depending on your height, through your flexibility, you either are a little bit straight like a T, arms at the height of the shoulders, or a little bit higher like the letter Y. Up to the chest. Good. Then from here, bend the knee. Options here again. Lean forward, take the foot momentarily with the right hand so you can reach around and maybe take hold of the hand just to the seat or join your lock your fingers. You can stay like this or bird of paradise. Your shoulder comes in front of the knee. And then you lock your hands again behind the back. If you know that variation, go ahead. Try to hold your wrists together for more flexible. Move to your hands towards your elbows. Try to get your leg right, your knee right close to the shoulder. And then release, come back down. So let's come to the back of the mat. Try another pose here. Tie your shoulder flexible, you can just keep your arms out to the side or join your hands together. Interlace your fingers. Walk your left foot forward, hinge at the hips, bring the body about the height of the, uh, the head above the height of the hip, and start off like balancing teeth balls. You can do again the airplane here. Now if you want to go a little bit further, eagle. So we have your arms spread, Imagine the wings of a bird, you're plunging down from a great height. Try to get the right leg higher. If your hands are together, try to get the hands over your shoulders. Fall towards your toes a little bit. Curve your back. Point the toes, make it look pretty. And then come back. Okay, try it the other side now. Step the right foot forward, hinge at the hips, bring your body level to the ground like you're lying on a table. You can start off in balance in T pose, or the airplane. If you ever lose your balance, you can take your fingertips to the ground. Don't worry if you lose your balance, just keep trying. If you want to go further, eagle. Lean a little bit further down, the head about the height of the knee, bring your left foot up higher. Imagine you're soaring and through the air and skimming the surface of the ocean. Or otherwise, if your hands are joined together, open up the palms, bring them over the shoulders. Take your head forward a little bit. Stand in the middle of the mat, facing at the long edge. Um, turn so you face the long edge of the mat. Fingers in line with your shoulders. Jump your feet to part. Arms come out to the side. Go to your left. Virabhadrasana to you. Try to sink down to the seat. Try to get your seat nice and low so you heel your knees over the toes. Of course, if it's too much, move according to condition. Come forward with a sense of purpose, and determination, and courage. Sweep the arm up, turn the hips and chest forward, come up into four, uh, Vita Badasana one. Allow the head to drop back, look up as though you're looking at the point of the sword. 
say or pose, I'm yours at your service at all times. If you can't turn the hip easily uh, all the way, you can lift the back heel, spin on your thumb, it points to your toes. Then lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Left hand comes to the left knee, lean away from the leg, slide your right hand back towards the back foot. Curve your, your body. From here, you have the option of bringing your left arm up, over the head, keep your seat nice and close to the ground, close to the front heel. If you can, you can see if you can bring your right foot up and hold it. Um, try to bring your foot close to your shoulder by leaning towards it, your fingers close to your ears. Your arm is pointing, um, vertically. your forearm is pointing straight up. Then you can maybe lock your hands together if your fingers are close to ears and push the foot away from your head, your shoulder. Swan pose. Think of the neck of a swan. It doesn't have any sharp bends or kinks anywhere along the way. Soften the elbow, elbow joint. Break the pose. Bring the foot back down. Turn forward. Walk the left foot out a little bit more towards the left. And from here, you fall towards the right. Anchor down to the right hip, the right forearm. Roll back to your left. Maybe the left forearm comes down. If that's too much, you can just stay on the hands. But just keep pushing your hips towards the ground. Feel as though there was a big weight sitting on your seat. If your pelvis is on the ground, you can move your left arm to the outside of the foot and keep telescoping your chest forward, whichever version you're doing. Try to get your chest to come right down. The more you lengthen, the more the body comes down. Sink again to the seat. Feel as though your hips are very heavy. Fix the gaze on the point. Be like a lizard, sun yourself on a warmer. Make sure your knee is not falling away from your shoulder. Both sides of the hips should be as even as possible. Your knee is over the heel. Now from here, come back onto the hands. Pull the hips back, left foot moves in a little bit. Come upright, the right toes bend under. Right arm comes up, take your hands to the outside of the knee, left hand can either come to your hip, I'll do it this way actually, and roll the hip down so both sides of the body stay long, or the hand to the sacrum, the, to the seat, inhale, lift through the chest. Exhale, turn to look over your left shoulder. You can maybe look Lean back and take your left hand to the outside of the heel behind you. Push your body, your, your lower back up and in. Now keep on pushing your knee and your, your heel towards the right as you turn towards your left. If you want to go further, come forward, Parivita Pashvakanasana. Right arm comes up, angle the toe and the knee towards the right, see how my arm is sitting on the leg, the arm is on the outside of the knee. Left hand is pressing into the right, starting the shoulder, but as you push the left hand down the right, the body comes up, the belly comes higher than the thigh. Keep pushing against the outside of the knee with your right elbow and pull the left hip back, the head forward, and try to get the center of the chest to look up. And the center of the chest is right behind the thumbs. If you know the bind, go ahead, you can move your hips back a little bit. Your elbow has to be in an open space underneath the knee. And then so you can use your left hand and slide your hand underneath your leg against your belly. Left hand goes over the back. Then you bind the fingers together, lock the fingers, or hold the right, the left wrist with your right hand. If you can, you can also bring your left knee up off the ground, your right knee up off the ground. Inhale, extend through the crown. Exhale, move the left shoulder all the way back. Try to look like you're lying on your back. Left shoulder is at the height, same height as the other one. From here, release, come back down. And from here, we're going to Actually, we're going to come back up, straighten the front leg, spin on your feet and your hands, face along edge of the mat, and come all the way up. 
go to the right now. If you're facing away from the camera, just jump around so you're facing the other way, the same 180 degrees. Again, sink down to the seat, shoulders level to the ground. Exude the confidence, the power of the warrior. Enter into the consciousness of that which you're representing. Try to tap into all the divine qualities. The left arm comes up to meet the right. Come up. First and foremost, show the devotion. Feel the devotion. Lower the knee. And from here, drop your seat forward towards the front heel. Right hand to the right knee. Left hand slides back to the back foot. Push your chest forward. Make sure you don't try not to make any folds in the in the waist, along the side body anywhere. You can stay here if you want. You can take the right arm up. Feel a nice smooth curve from the toes all the way to the fingers. If you can, you can bring the left foot up. As you turn to your, you want to bring your knee a little bit to your uh, left. You know they're not in the same line as the foot. So the foot. When it comes up is a little bit from the shoulder. Then you place it into the crook of the arm, the fingers close to the ear, lean towards the foot so you can take your fingers a little bit more easily. And then push the foot away by pressing the foot into the inside of the arm. Open up, try not to tilt and hunch the back. Lengthen your arm. Pose, bring the foot towards you and let the foot down. From here, lizard. Pull the hip back, walk the right foot out, and then come down. Roll to your left, try to get your left forearm down, roll to the right, the right forearm might come down too. Telescope the chest forward. Imagine you had big weights in your hip pockets that are attracting your hips and your lower body down, anchoring them down, and then maybe the rest of the body will follow. So as you're doing this, making sure if your foot's too close, it's going to fall out to the side. Um, you can also, sometimes this happens, your foot comes away, your shoulders, you're not, you're not, they're not in the same line. Try to have your foot and your knee in the same line. If your pelvis is down on the ground, maybe you can bring your forearm to the outside of the foot, your right forearm, your shoulder is right beside or right on the foot. Eventually your chest comes down. Try to imagine where the, the being or that form is in complete ease, that's where you go. And eventually maybe you find the ease as well. By bringing yourself, merging with the form. Now come back onto the hands. Slide the right foot back. Do it this way, you can see another angle here. Bend the toes under the legs, so like a box, 90 degrees. Left arm up, go to the outside of the right knee, and then that hand on the seat or on the hip. Roll the hip down, drop the right hip, turn towards the right. If you want to lean back, so you can take your hand to the, ins um, the outside of the left heel. Push the lower back up and in. Turn to your right as you continue to push the knee and the toes towards the left. Feel free to stay here if you're already at your edge. Or Padivita Pashvakanasana. Left arm up. Hang the tone and knee towards the left to create more space. The arm comes down, sits on the outside of the leg. Hands again in prayer. Or and push your right hand down to the left. Try to get your belly higher than the thigh. And then rotate. Right shoulder moves all the way back. Extending the back, the seat back and the head forward, the right hip moves back. If you want to take a bind, go ahead. Move your hip back, create more space. Elbow is um, just underneath the knee, in the space below the knee, and use the right hand to guide the hand through. And then join your, lock your fingers or hold the left, uh, the, bring the left hand to the right wrist. Again, take the knee up off the ground. 
Well, the children lose back. Keep tugging on the arm. If your knees off the ground, keep pressing the back knee up. Extend from the heel all the way to the crown. Stay strong. Now come back into high plank. From here, Vasi Stasana. Move your seat back. Bring your left hand more towards the right hand. Come into Vasi Stasana. Side plank. Push your hips forward. You can cross your ankles if you like. You can even um, practice raising the right leg up like a starfish. Make sure you're not dropping into your shoulders. So you shouldn't lose your neck here. Keep your arm fully extended. back down, into plank, move back into down facing dog, I like doing it this way because it gives you a little bit more height in the hips which helps with your steadiness. As you spin towards your left, your left foot crosses over the right, and if you want you can see if you raise the left leg up. here, lower down on the knees, and from here, sit either on the heels or between the heels if you have the flexibility, and then walk your hands back, depending again on your condition, your knees don't force and don't go to place of pain, this is not what you want to transmit. You can just slide your hands back, lift the seat, tilt it forward, and just try to get a lot of length in the shoulders to the knees. If you're more flexible, come down onto the forearms. Allow your head to reach back or lie on your back. You can take hold of your opposite elbows over your head. Breathe in. Inflate the lungs. Exhale, deflate. Feel the belly button going right down through the body and into the ground. Imagine it doing so. If you can, you can bring your thighs, inner thighs together. Right, come back up, press. If you have your done on your back, bring your hands to the feet, lift your chin and chest, and then make your way up. We're going to do one more round of Vasi Stasana. This time maybe you can do another version. So start in plank, down facing dog, or repeat the same thing. If it's too much, you can also do it breathing like this. Okay, so you're going on your left hand first and your left foot. So as you come into downward facing dog, turn towards the right, spin on your foot, so your 45, foot is at 45 degrees, slide it in a little bit, so you shorten the base between your hands and your foot, lift your hip up, your pelvis is up, and make sure your left arm is extended again, your left foot flat on the ground, and then it makes it easier to take your right foot up, all your weight on your left hand and your left foot, bring your knee up. Have your hip high, your left foot flat on the ground, otherwise you lose your balance. You feel heavy and then you can't sustain the pose. Now try it on the other side, let go of the foot. Press into your left hand, keep your left hip high as you move back into downward facing dog. Go to the other side. Right hand comes more in front of the nose, towards the left. Spin towards your left. Turn on your foot at the same time. Your foot's at 45 degree. So your toes in the same line as the leg. Okay, so then it makes it easier to get a solid foundation on the leg. Your left hip, your right hip is up. Your arm is fully extended, not falling into your shoulder. And perhaps you can take the knee or the foot. And then release. Come back into downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. And now from here, lower down on the knees. From here, take hold of your opposite elbows and then push your elbows back behind the head. Push the head back into the arms. Lift the chest. 
Exhale, sink the shoulders, sink down to the seat. Try not to allow the body to fall back down into the hips. Make as though you're trying to squeeze the elbows together. And release. Okay, just a sec. All right, so now, sorry for that interruption. Headstand. Shil Shasana. So if you know how to get into headstand, go ahead. If you need a little bit more guidance, you can look here. So if you're in headstand, if you can make your way there, then you can bring your legs into lotus. You can do whatever variation you want. Find the steadiness. Bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows and fix your gaze in the center of the forebrow. Otherwise, other options. If you're very uncomfortable coming up too high, forehead comes in front of the knee. You can just lift your seat up. Try to get your seat over your knees and your upper back forward. You'll feel more pressure on the back of the neck. If it's too much, just slide your head forward a little bit so you're on the top of the head. If you want to go a little bit further, you can take your fingertips to the ground, lift the seat, and walk your knee, your feet towards your wrists. If you really push hard in the fingertips, it's a very strong stand. Lift your palms up, try not to flatten your palms too much, but press into the finger pads, and just push just underneath the knees against your elbows and then you can lift your toes. If you're not comfortable with your fingertips on the ground like that, just turn your fingers uh, facing forward towards your head and your hands flat on the ground and you can do it this way. Okay, and get very close to the ground. You have to have your seat over your shoulders more so that you don't fall back down. Eventually you can get your feet up if you're comfortable. Move your knees in, maybe even eventually take one knee up off the arm at the time, and then you bring them into your chest. Okay, so go ahead and try that. If it's too much, you can stay on the, bring your seat back. Make sure you can hold your elbows easily. And then bring your hands forward, bend the toes under, make your way into downward facing dog. You can move forward into plank, your chin comes over your hands and come strengthen this way. Try not to move your elbows. If you're still up in headstand, bravo, stay there. If you want, you can keep your, bring your head now in between your palms, walk your feet towards your elbows, and bring your left leg up and back. Push up off the right heel. If your left leg doesn't course, if you feel comfortable, hold your breath, press in the forearms, press your hands against your head, and then flick your toes up away from the ground, bend your toes back, then you're hovering, this is start a headstand, eventually you keep pushing your left foot back until the foot is dangling heavily behind your seat, and then your feet will be at the same height as your hips. It's a very stable posture. Keep your toes flat so you keep your, your root muscles engaged, your core muscles engaged. Now come back down softly with control. Lower down into child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften everything. Roll your way up. Okay. So we're going to try, um, well, we're going to come out to your back first for shoulder stand. So scooch right forward to the front of the mat. The easiest way to come in, you just roll back, push into the arms, and send your seat up over your shoulders, your feet behind your head. Bring your arms closer together. Join your hands if you can. This will keep your arms behind your back. And then slowly you bring your hands on your back, you'll find a straighter line when you come up. If you're comfortable, your hands to the middle of the back and lift your legs up, one or both at a time. 
If your legs can't find a straight line, that's okay. You can allow your seat to drop a little bit, your legs at an angle, or you can keep your knees close to your shoulders. So just do again according to your comfort level. Do you find steadiness and the ability to still the mind, but still challenging the body? Otherwise, your legs are straight up, toes over the chin. Or if you can, you can come into your lotus. Through the lotus, the body, the mind becomes more one-pointed. So if you're in lotus, try to get your knees higher than your hips. If you're riding on top of your shoulder for your lotus, or your legs are straight, you can try to bring your hands to your thighs. Really push your chest towards your chin, push your hips forward as well. Bring your attention to the space between the eyebrows. Concentrate on the center of the forebrow. They say that when you have 100% of your attention and devotion there, this will trigger divine bliss. Keep practicing, keep trying. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, but deeper within. Beyond the body, the mind, and the emotions. None of these are none of those are you. And from here, if you have a lotus, you can do panda pindasana. Bring your legs, your lotus against your body. If you have the reach, you can still put your arms around the outside of the thighs. Join your hands underneath the seat. Pull your thighs towards the body. If you don't have a lotus, come back into plow. If you come to the ground behind your head, if they don't touch down, and bring your hands to your back. Encourage by pushing, if you push into your hips, your feet might come down. But again, don't force it. Option to bring your knees your thighs against the body, your knees on either side of the head. If you're flexible, if your knees come to your shoulders, maybe to the floor in front of the shoulders. Withdraw from your senses. Close out all the distractions coming through your eyes and your ears. Way to come back out. So we're going to bring our hands behind the back again, palms down, fingers, index fingers and thumbs touching. Keep your legs close to the body as you roll down. If you have a lotus, you can keep your lotus. And if your seat lands on your heels, uh, your, your, on your wrists, sorry, you keep bringing your legs down to about 45 degrees. Push into your, your hands down and lift your back up off the ground. This thing like a repose. Push your chest forward, arch your back, bring the head back, top of the head to the ground. If it's too much, bring your legs down. If you have a lotus, you can do the lotus fish if you know that variation. I'll just demonstrate quickly. You're in a lotus, you bring your chest up, top of the head down, maybe try to hold the feet Tug on the feet. If you bring your elbows close, push into your elbows, lift your chest, your knees will come down, perhaps. Lift up through the heart. Now, whichever expression you're in, breathe very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. Breathe in, breathe out all fatigue, soften. 
Now bring your feet close to the seat. Options here. You can do bridge pose. Let's start in bridge pose. Actually, everybody starts in bridge pose. The feet in line with the edges of the hip. Your fingers touching the heels slightly. That's about the right distance. And then lift the seat up. Walk the shoulders underneath. And see if you can get your chest up close to your chin. The chest will look like a wall. Tilt the hips forward. Use your hands to tilt the pelvis forward. The backs, the knees, and line with the heels. If your knees are more over the toes, you have you can still probably push up a little bit more if you can. Really push your chest towards your chin. Now you can stay here if you like, or move your hands beside your head, fingertips facing away from you, and then slide your head back so that it's behind your hands. Turn your hands around, fingers facing slightly outwards and the toes and the fingers towards the heels. Take half breath in, if you feel comfortable, lift your head up off the ground, or the Badanirasana. And lift the heels, rock back and forth. So try to stay up. Option here, and lower the heels again, but bring the left knee up towards the chest and straight up. You can do this from your bridge as well. If you can, you can come off, off all but one index, the index finger of the right hand as well. No weight, almost no weight on that, just until you're on the fingernail, all the weight on your left hand and your right foot. And then come back down, try it on the other side. Right knee comes up, extend the leg up, and stay there on both hands firmly or Push more weight into your right hand and come up all with just one index finger. The index finger is the left hand. Move a little bit further away from you. Put your index finger right up off the ground. And then release. Bring the right leg down. Come back down onto your back. Breathe in, breathe out, relax, sink. Even in these rest positions, offer them up. The practice is you try to find the ideal balance between strength and effort with softness and surrender. Now, come to seated position. And from here, we're going to this way here. Take the right. You can fold the left leg in like so with the heel towards the root. If you can, you can lean towards your right and bend the left leg back so the, your foot is beside your, your hip, not sitting on the foot. And then just take your right foot in your hands and push it back behind your body underneath your arm a few times. And bring the foot across the front of the body, hold the foot in the hand, or bring it to crook of the arm, rock side to side. And then from here, maybe you can bring your right shoulder in front of the knee. And then from here, you can either press your hand underneath the heel and see if you can get your legs straight. Sometimes this does the body starts to hunch a little bit. If your body's hunching a lot, you might want to use a strap. Bring a strap around the foot and then you can pull on the strap, try to get your arm and your legs straighter. If you have the flexibility, take the front, uh, reach hand across the front of the foot, take out uh, the other edge, push into your hands and telescope the body out of the hips. Look over your left shoulder towards the sky. Push your leg right back behind your body. Bring the knee down, or bring the foot down. Slide it out to the right. So we have about nine degrees between your legs. From here, turn your body so that your belly's over your thigh, reach it right up, and hinge your body down onto your leg. If you need to, you bend your knee up, press your belly on your thigh. And the weight of the body eventually will allow the little bit more release. 
take your attention to the base of the spine. Imagine a spine lengthening. This is easier for you. You can move the right hand to the inside, slide it along the inside the leg. Turn so your left shoulder, your right shoulder is against the inside of the knee. You can hold the foot with the right heel of the right hand and reach over your left hand. So you might be able to take the foot and keep pushing the back of the shoulder into the knee. Turn your chest up. You can take your right hand and press into the inside the left thigh, roll it outwards, or reach underneath and take hold of the heel. Pull on the heel. Try to get a little bit more rotation. Chest and face straight up, straight up. the other side. Lean to your left. Either fold the right leg back or if it's too much for your knee, just keep it in front. So you bring your left knee up now. Take hold of the foot and just do a few motions just to loosen up the hip a little bit. Push the knee back behind your body. And then take it in front of the body, slide it back and forth in front of the chest. You can either hold the foot in the hand or bring it to the crook of the arm. Go back and forth. And then from here, left shoulder in front of the left knee. Push again your knee back behind you. Take your right hand to heel. See if you can raise it up. Use a strap if you need to or Turn your fingers to the side, reach across the front of the foot, take hold the other edge, and pull the foot up. And you push into your hand, it's almost going to fly out of, the, uh, out of the hips. Look up towards your right. Try to create space, telescope your neck out of the shoulder, try not to hunch down. Then from here, bring the, bend the knee and bring the leg, left foot out. From here, form at least nine degrees to your legs. Turn to your left. Actually, you might need to close your, probably no more than nine degrees for this first one. Raise your arms up, hinge forward. Take hold of the ankle or the heel. Bend your knee if you need to. If you have a very tightened hamstring, and then pull the body down onto your leg. Try to get your shoulder beyond the knee, from humidity and your chest beyond your knee. And then if you like, left side, hand slides in front of the leg on the inside, and push the back of the left shoulder against the inside of the leg. You can take hold of the, the right, hand to the heel, maybe the right hand comes over the head, the left hand to the heel, did I say right hand, yes, left, left hand to heel, maybe the right hand as well, depending on your flexibility, and turn your chest up, keep pushing to the back of the shoulder, into the inside of the leg, take your left hand to your right thigh, or reach underneath, or the ankle from above, tug on the ankle, try to get your chest up. yourself in the pose and then coming back up release good now release the legs now from here um, let's see okay so we're going to cross the ankles but come down onto the body Forehead on the hands, breathe in, breathe out, soft. Now from here, we're going to start off with cobra. So you can hold the edge of the mat if you like, pull the edge of the mat, lift your chest, anchor down to the lower body from the hips all the way down to the, and the thighs and the tops of the feet. 
feel how do you see the shoulders as though there are weights pressing right down on the shoulders keep pushing your chest forward away from your seat lengthen lower back back of the neck make sure you're not jamming your sh your shoulders up towards your ears lengthen your neck then you bring your elbows up off the ground allow the head to come back you can keep holding on to your mat if you like, or let go of the mat, start to walk hands towards you. Bring your feet together, come up higher, form a curve in your back like the letter C. Walk your hands closer as you see fit. Pulse a little bit, push with your fingertips, the heels of your palms, try to get your shoulders back, your head over your seat. your fingertips. So you can walk your fingertips closer to the hips, come up. So pretty much the whole torso is up off the mat, just top to your thighs. That's where the connection starts with your legs to the ground. Try not to lift your thighs up off the ground, keep your thighs down. And from here, tuck the chin in slowly and make your way down. Relax. Breathe in. You don't have to drop all of the heat out of your body. So, do one more time. Start with your hands a little bit closer to your, um, around, um, just to, um, alongside the rib basket, the bottom of the rib basket. Roll the shoulders back, push into the fingertips, lift the palms, and then come up. The fingers are at equal distance. Allow the head to go back. Now open up your legs. See if you can slide your hands even closer in, right beside the hips. Get your body up high, and then bend your knees, bring your toes up, point your toes, eventually maybe your toes will find the head. Feel so you're squeezing socks behind your knees. Some of you are uh, pretty find this easy. You can move the right hand closer to the middle and take hold of your left shin with your left hand on the outside. And then once you have a good grip, hold your breath and take your other hand. A bound King Cobra. Again, according to your condition and your abilities. For advanced practitioners. Now from here, come out of the pose. Bring one leg down, keep the pressure in your leg as you bring it down. Bring your left hand down and then release. Bring your chin down towards your chest and come down. Breathe in. Breathe out all the fatigue. Relax. All right, one more. Practicing forearm balance. So in this, you want to make sure your elbows are no wider than the shoulders, closer in. Spread your fingers, thumbs pretty much together, middle fingers are like straight ahead, okay? So parallel to one another. You can do this against the wall if you like. So if I'm doing against the wall, I bring my feet right against the wall, my seat on my heels like doing child's pose. You bring your elbows underneath the shoulders, make sure you can hold the elbows easy. Don't move your elbows once you're, they're in that spot. Press the fingertips, the hands down. See if you can bring one foot to the wall. And then once you have the foot up, it's not easy for me to do because I obviously don't have a wall, but imagine my foot's on the wall and then bring your other foot back. Okay. And then you can stay up to your head on the ground while you're doing this. But eventually push into the arms, take half breath in, and lift your head up. You can even do this if you're on the ground without a wall. So you start with your head on the ground, your wrist, your head just behind your wrist. Really push into the wrists and the arms, half breath in, and see if you can just tilt your head forward. Keep one leg back hanging very close to the seat. So if you go over, you're not close far from the ground. You just tuck your chin in and go over onto your back. Flex your feet. If you're doing it without the wall, it should, should uh, just show the entry, just pulse up and down. So you can even just, if you're doing it with your head off the ground, you can do this, so just pulse up and down. You can even just stay here. Don't even have to flip, leave the ground. 
Okay, just push into your arms if you have breath in. Very soft jumps, push up with your toes. The closer you get the foot to your elbow, the more ability you have to come up without jumping too hard and sending yourself all up right over onto your back. Okay, so the hips are over the shoulders. Again, keep that back foot hanging close to your seat. Helps you keep the balance, keep your feet flexed and keep your body, your, your core muscles engaged. And come back down. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Soften everything. When you're doing these poses, when you're practicing, don't go to the point of exhaustion. Everything just kind of falls apart from there. Give yourself some time to rest. Keep visualizing yourself in the pose. And then lose all the expectations, just make it an offering, and then perhaps the pose will just the pose will just realize itself. Can you come back up to seated? So we're going to take your legs out in front. Adhamatyandrasana. You can either Whole fold the left leg in so the foot is beside your right hip and your left foot comes across your right foot comes across the outside the left knee. If you can do this without raising without while keeping both seats the sides of the seat down, then you can do this version. If you can't get both sides of the seat down, you just extend your left leg and you move your right foot out further forward beyond the knee, close to the ankle. Okay, I'll just demonstrate this way first. Right hand right down center in the back behind the back, left arm up, and then bring the forearm against the thigh, push the elbow into your thigh, turn your chest towards the right, inhale, push the lower back up and in, and move deeper into the twist, bit by bit, try to get your shoulders flush along the edge of the mat, imagine you can see right through your skin, and see the spine turning, spiraling upwards, eventually the head turns and the chin comes over your back shoulder. If your leg is bent, you can reach down with your left hand to your heel, tug on the heel, this might give you a little bit more, um, give it a little stretch and twist. Now, coming back, change sides. Right leg folds in, and then the left foot comes the outside, or again, extend the left the right leg if you need to. Left hand just down the center of this back against the seat. Raise your right arm up and go to the left. Push the elbow into the knee and lean into the elbow. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, turn into your left. You take your hand to the heel, your right hand to the right heel if you like, or other variations. Make sure you're not leaning back. So if you're leaning back, you don't get the full extent of this twist, the stretch. Keep your hand right close to the seat to remind yourself to keep yourself propped up. moment in the comfortable pose. If you can do a lotus, you can do a lotus. Otherwise, you can just stay in Sukhasana or sit on the heels, whatever's comfortable for you. Close the eyes. Bring your attention to the space between the eyebrows. See to divine perception. attention fixed on that spot. Imagine God sitting right there in the seat of the mind, guiding you, talking to you. Go 
listen to the voice of the inner, of the inner guru, who is the true nature of yourself, divine, infinite, immutable. visualize a divine essence or there is no form there is no shape or form to the true self the true nature to God all prevailing all encompassing ever present and there even before creation started and there even beyond the ends of this universe gentle that doesn't break your attention from your inner gaze and softly make your way down onto your back surrender all tension all efforts Make yourself completely open and receptive to receiving all the gifts of the practice. Imagine being inundated by all the goodness. Direct it all towards the spiritual heart or God really resides the voice of God in your mind, the love of God in your heart, always guiding you to a place where you can stay in accordance to the ethical precepts, yama and niyama. Without these ethical precepts, the observance of those, there is no yoga. So make an intention now of just being firmly established in compassion, first and foremost. All the others, all the other ethical rules follow along more naturally if you have the compassion. Say to yourself now the following sentence three times to ingrain that intention in your mind and heart. I remain in observance to yama and niyama. Say that three times. Keep that always in your mind and heart so you can carry it out in the world with you in all your interactions. Remember that God is equally present in all forms. This is why we do the practice, the asana practice, to celebrate all the magnificent and divine ways that God manifests in each forms. And then all we see when we look upon others is beauty and divinity and grace and magnificence. Now prepare to come back from Shavasana. Slowly, in a way that is gentle and silent and reverent, make your way back to a seated position.
once you're seated sit up tall once again come back to that idea of seeing God in all forms as you continue with your day-to-day -day life so close the practice now with Om Shanti 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 instill the peace within send out the peace to all beings everywhere Oh Shanti 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 Be receptive to the grace of God all is within Thank you very much for joining today. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. Yes, next week should be okay. The week after that, there will be class on Sunday instead of Saturday, but next week is still good. 8.30 next Saturday. Hope to see you then.